These are the four best budget phones that you can buy. The Nothing Phone 1, the iPhone SE, the Pixel 6a, and the Samsung Galaxy M53. Now, of course, there are tons of other budget phones from Xiaomi, Honor, Oppo, and more. Um, so we therefore picked the most popular options on the market. So which one is overall the best? Well, we're going to compare everything in six different categories, from the design and the build quality, to the display, usage, camera, battery, and charging, as well as noteworthy features. Whilst scoring them so that you know at the end of this video which one is overall the best choice. But before that, we have to talk about the price, which is almost the same on all of these phones. $399 for the Nothing Phone 1, $399 for the Pixel 6a, and $419 for the iPhone SE and the Samsung Galaxy M53. Also, we have two different approaches here. So Apple and Google, they took the basic phone approach, where uh, we have no high refresh rates and the displays are quite small, uh, but they do have a flagship processor and flagship cameras. And nothing and Samsung, they literally took the opposite approach, where we do have a high refresh rate display, which is also quite large, uh, but we have a mid-range chip and mid-range cameras. So it would be really interesting to see here how they would all compare. Starting off with the design and the build quality, the best one by far is the Nothing Phone 1. The Nothing Phone 1 has the most unique design that I've seen on a phone with this see-through back. And it's not just the design that's unique, the unboxing experience is very unique too. It feels great in the hand, it honestly feels way more expensive than it actually is. The second best choice is the Pixel 6a. So my favorite thing about a Pixel 6a is that it looks like a flagship. As you can tell, it is almost identical design-wise to the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro. The frame is made out of metal, so it is super high quality. Um, and then the back is made out of plastic, but honestly, I couldn't even tell at first as it does actually feel like glass. The build quality is mostly great. Uh, my only complaint is that the camera uh, looks as if it has a screen protector, but it's simply just raised. And this just feels very, very uh, poor quality. But other than that, it's, it's great. Then in the third place, we have the iPhone SC. Now, normally I would have given this the last place as it has the most outdated design, an eight-year-old design that just doesn't sit right in 2022. But the build quality is honestly superb as good as the Nothing Phone, if not even better. And it's also got a good weight to it, so it feels very premium and high quality in the hand. And at number four, we have the Samsung Galaxy M53. Now, this phone is entirely made out of plastic, so it feels very, very cheap. The frame is also made out of plastic, uh, and it is very lightweight. And honestly, this phone feels like one of the cheapest ones I've ever held in my hand. So there's a major difference in quality between this one and uh, the other three phones. Now, when it comes to the displays, the winner for the best overall display is, once again, the Nothing Phone 1. It's got a large 6.55 inch panel. Uh, this is actually the brightest display out of all of these phones outdoors, uh, although it's not as visible as a flagship, but it's still pretty good. The screen bezel is very thin and also uniform all around, and we do not have a chin. The color reproduction is also great on the Nothing Phone. The black levels are perfect, and keep in mind that this is also an OLED display. And it is also a 120Hz panel, so it's super, super fluid. I think my only complaint is that the camera has has a bit of a weird placement, so it's on the left, but it's not quite in the corner. But I mean, other than that, this is an amazing display to watch content on. Absolutely stunning, especially for this price. In the second place, we have the Samsung Galaxy M53. Now, this one has the biggest display of them all at 6.7 inches. It's also got an OLED panel, so the colors and the contrast are just great. By the way, it does have some issues playing back HDR videos. In this case, uh, I don't know, you can probably tell it looks very washed out compared to the others, but it only applies in HDR content for some reason. You can see that in non-HDR content, it looks just as vibrant as the other ones. Although it is a bit dimmer compared to the Nothing Phone. And just like the Nothing Phone, it too has a 120Hz refresh rate. So super fluid, super smooth. I think the only downside that I have in terms of the display is that the bezels are not uniform. So they are thicker on the top, and uh, even thicker on the bottom where we do have a chin. We also have this weird plastic rim surrounding the display, which makes the bezels look even thicker. In the third place, we have the Pixel 6a. Now, this has a much smaller 6.1 inch panel, 
but it is also an OLED display, so the colors are really, really punchy. However, I don't know how well you can tell, but the display is actually a bit dimmer than on the Samsung and the Nothing Phone. Other downsides include the bezels, which are pretty thick and once again uneven. We have a pretty fat chin. But the biggest display downside by far is the refresh rate, which is just 60 hertz, and everything just feels especially choppy um, on the Pixel 6a. I don't know how to describe it, but it feels less than 60 hertz. It feels like 50 or 45. Something's happening here. It just doesn't feel as smooth as uh, the iPhone does, which also has 60 hertz. Speaking of the iPhone, the SE is in the last place when it comes to the display, which is no surprise really. It's got the smallest screen at 4.7 inches, and it is also an LCD panel, so the black levels are just very grayish, and the colors don't pop as much as on the other phones. And this is also a 750p resolution panel. Now, the PPI is still fairly high so that you don't really see any pixels with normal usage, but once you start reading some smaller text, that's when you can actually tell that it is not as sharp as the other phones. It's also got the dimmest display out of all of them. I don't know how easy you can tell that on the camera. And of course, we also have these gigantic bezels from 2014. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous in 2022. And this is also just a 60 hertz panel. So yeah, other than that, there's not much to say about the display, aside from the color accuracy, which by the way is pretty good. And just because the display is so dim, it does not support HDR content, so you can probably tell that there's a big difference in brightness between uh, the SE3 and the Nothing Phone. Not only that, but the SE3 also lacks an always-on display, which all the other three phones have. But probably the most important thing of a phone is um, the experience when you're using it. And although they all have some slight issues here, the best one by far to use is, once again, <laughs> the Nothing Phone 1. So for the most part, you get a full stock Android experience with some very small changes, like the font is a bit different uh, on some of the widgets. Uh, the always on display also has a custom font. We do have a custom camera app as well, and then also a voice recording app. But other than that, this is pure stock Android. And because of that, it is crazy smooth to use. Everything just opens up almost instantly. Uh, it's very fast, very fluid. Animations are smooth. I'm really, really happy with it. Although uh, we do have some occasional lag here and there in some of the apps, but for the most part, this is an amazing experience. And we also have an actual haptic engine, which is pretty decent. Um, it could definitely be better, but to be honest, for the price, uh, this is way better than what you would normally get. We also have an in-display ThinkPen reader, which to be honest is pretty fast, way faster than uh, I was expecting here. And nothing is also promising three years of major software updates. So overall, I really loved using it. Uh, I think my only complaint would be the haptics, like I said, and some occasional choppiness, uh, but this is quite rare, to be honest. Okay, the second choice is, this is probably quite surprising, uh, the iPhone SE 3. Now, the reason why I went with this is because it's insanely fast and fluid. Um, and that's because it runs on Apple's A15 chip, which is the same chip as in the iPhone 13 Pro. This is the most powerful processor in any smartphone and paired with a low resolution display that's also small and only at 60 hertz this thing runs awesome with no lag and the apps load instantly and it's just like an awesome experience using it the haptic engine is superb way better than nothing's although apple isn't really using it as much as uh, google is in android and the fingerprint reader although it is not built into the display it is external on the home button it is super super fast and based on what apple did in the past you should expect at least five years of soft drop dates with the SC. Then my third choice is the Pixel 6a. Now, this is a very similar experience overall to the Nothing Phone, but with a couple of differences. For example, I haven't really noticed the uh, lag uh, and the slight occasional stutter uh, that I've noticed on the Nothing Phone. And this is thanks to Google's flagship Tensor chip. And the haptic engine just feels awesome. Like Google actually takes way more use of it on the Pixel uh, than what we see on the Nothing Phone, and the haptic engine overall is way more advanced than what we have on the Nothing Phone. But sadly, that 60 hertz panel that I mentioned before, it does make it feel quite choppy, and you know, like I said, it feels just not as smooth as the iPhone does with 60 hertz as well. The ThinkPad reader is built into the display, just like on the Nothing Phone, although it is quite a bit slower. But the good news is that just like on the Nothing Phone, Google promises three years of software updates. And in the last place, we have the Samsung Galaxy M53. Now, uh, this one is also a 120 hertz experience and uh, it feels pretty fast and smooth, but I have noticed way more lag and way more stutter than on the Nothing Phone by quite a considerable amount. 
uh, as you can probably see. So I don't know, it just doesn't feel as polished as the Nothing Phone. Plus, we also have quite a lot of bloatware pre-installed. Also, all of, all of these phones, uh, this one has the weakest processor. When it comes to haptics, we don't actually have any haptics on the Samsung phone. It's just a standard vibration motor. Uh, so yeah, it sounds really, really bad and also very cheap. It does come with a Pimpion reader, although this is not built into the display, but rather uh, in the power button. Also, I just want to make it clear that when I said that this phone is slow, it is slow compared to these other phones. Like, if you only had this phone and nothing else to compare it with, honestly, you'd be very happy with it. Samsung promises two years of software updates, so um, less than all the other ones. But the good news is that just like with any other Samsung phone, you just get a ton of features, some which you might never use, but at least, uh, at least they're there. And Samsung also offers the highest amount of customization from all the other phones. Uh, for example, I can change the always-on clock style and the color and so much more. And now let's talk about the camera. So the Nothing Phone, the Pixel and the Samsung, they all have an ultra-wide module. The iPhone does not. Now, the Samsung has a crazy 180 megapixel sensor, but this is actually different from the one that we have in the S22 Ultra. So this is a lower end version of it. Some interesting camera facts. Um, the Nothing Phone has the newest camera hardware, while the Pixel has the oldest. In fact, it is actually using the same main module as the Pixel 2 from 2017. Okay, so in terms of which one has the best overall camera, that is the Pixel 6a. But not every phone is perfect, so let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to the camera. So in terms of the good for the Pixel, uh, the daytime shots were very good. Most importantly, they were consistently good. Also, the ultrawide had stellar image processing despite this pretty weak hardware. And the night mode was also the best on the Pixel, significantly better than all the other phones. So I was very, very impressed with the Pixel. Now, in terms of the bad, uh, the selfies are not great, so they don't really have a lot of details, uh, as the subject just blends in too much uh, into the backgrounds. Also, in terms of bad, we have video. So the video is 4K60, but it is quite noisy, even when you have a lot of sunlight. So. Yeah, the quality just isn't anything special here. Just of the ugly, we have portrait mode, which is honestly barely even usable. It's really bad. The Pixel 6 had the same issue where everything just looks very low res, and sadly, the Pixel 6a has the exact same problem. Okay, the second best camera-wise is the iPhone SE 3. So in terms of the good, the daytime shots are awesome. Just as good as the Pixel. So they're very consistent and the quality is just outstanding. Also, the iPhone SE has the best video by far out of all of these phones, uh, 4K60 as well, and the quality is just incredible. Uh, image processing on this is just out of this world for both the day and nighttime video. The selfies are also very good, although they do lack a bit of detail, and the microphone is pretty good considering the size of this phone. This is a microphone test on the iPhone SE 3. Now, in terms of bad things to mention, there's nothing really, and that's because there's quite a few in terms of the ugly. So we don't have an ultra wide module, which I think is a huge downside compared to all of these other phones. Uh, and then an even bigger downside is that it does not have a night mode at all. So when you're comparing nighttime shots, both from the front facing camera and from the back against these other phones, the iPhone just looks really, really bad. Okay, at number three, we have the Nothing Phone 1. So let's talk about the good. Probably the best thing about this phone is the portrait mode, which is honestly outstanding. The portrait mode on the Nothing Phone is significantly better than on all of these other three. There's a huge difference. So I'm very impressed in terms of that. Then uh, video in nighttime is also the best here. And that's because none of these phones uh, do any processing in low light video. Um, so in that case, they all rely on the camera hardware. And then since this has the newest, uh, it's also the best in low light. And the front facing video was surprisingly good. Uh, very, very sharp and yeah, really impressed with that as well. Now let's talk about the bad. So right now the quality is just okay. Like daytime shots are okay. Sometimes they're a hit, sometimes they're a miss. Uh, they're definitely worse than the iPhone and the Pixel. The ultra wide is also just okay. The night mode is also just okay. Uh, not as good as the Pixel. So everything about it is just okay. Now let's talk about the ugly. So there's a lot of glitches here, especially in terms of the camera. This is a shot that I took and for some reason it has this green filter on. Uh, I don't know where that came from. And the mic is also pretty bad. Okay, this is a microphone test on the Nothing Phone 1. This is a microphone test on the iPhone SE 3. This has the, the worst mic out of all of these four phones. Then the videos have some really strange artifacts and flickering. So I don't know what's up with that. And you can only shoot in 4K 
30. And if you want to do HDR, you're stuck to 1080p 30. Now, I should also mention that the moment you install the Google camera app, which you have to do unofficially, sadly, it actually becomes better than the Pixel. It actually takes the crown for the best camera out of these four phones. And then in the fourth place, we have, of course, the Samsung Galaxy M53. So in terms of the good, uh, the selfies are pretty good, uh, both in daytime and nighttime. Uh, this actually shoots my favorite selfies out of these four phones. In terms of bad, I don't really have anything bad to say, as there's a lot in Ugly. I don't even know where to start. Uh, the ultrawide is basically unusable. It's extremely bad in both daytime and nighttime. And speaking of nighttime, this phone is also unusable in low light. Like, the iPhone has better low light without a night mode. Then the videos are very shaky. There's no optical stabilization, it seems, or if there is, it's just very, very bad. And then Pad Portrait is also very bad uh, with just some horrible edge detection. Honestly, this camera is just garbage. Like, there's no better way to put it. It's really, really bad. It's truly potato quality. And this is quite surprising to me because I was expecting uh, I don't know, the Samsung to get like a second place here, but it's really, really bad. Just avoid it, honestly. Okay, now when it comes to the battery and charging, uh, in the first place, we have once again the Nothing Phone 1. And that is because it has a pretty large 4,500 million parts battery, which for me lasted me for an entire day, so it's been pretty good. Uh, we also have fast charging, 50% in just 30 minutes. We also have wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. Uh, and of course, we also have USB Type-C. Okay, in the second place, we have the Samsung Galaxy M53. Now, this actually has the biggest battery of all of them at 5,000 mAh, and also fast charging, 43% uh, in 30 minutes. Sadly, we don't really have any wireless charging or any reverse wireless charging. And since the display is 120Hz, you can drop it to 60Hz to last you for even longer. Then we have the Pixel 6a. Uh, this one has the smallest battery at 4,410 million powers. Uh, but the display is also 60 hertz, so it kind of compensates in that regard. We also have fast charging, 50% in 30 minutes, but sadly, we do not have wireless charging. And in the last place, you probably guessed it, it is the iPhone SE 3. This one has the smallest battery of all at 2018 million powers. And when I was using this phone, it honestly would die uh, throughout the day, like midway through the day, it was basically dead. So yeah, it wasn't great. It does have fast charging, 50% in 30 minutes. Uh, it also has wireless charging, sadly no reverse wireless charging, but I think that the worst part of it is that it comes with lightning instead of USB-C. Now let's talk about noteworthy features, features that make all of these phones stand out. And the phone with the most amount of them is, um, the Nothing Phone, once again. Obviously, the biggest unique feature is the Glyph interface, which you can customize uh, based on ringtones and uh, notifications. But it's not just that. The Nothing Phone also has the highest amount of RAM on all of these phones, eight gigabytes, and you can even upgrade it to 12. We only have six on uh, the Pixel and the Samsung, and of course, four on the iPhone. Then we also have Gorilla Glass 5 on both the front and the back, compared to just Gorilla Glass 3, for example, on the Pixel. The Nothing Phone also has a macro mode, which is pretty decent, actually. My only major complaint here are the speakers, which are pretty bad. So we do have dual speakers, but to be honest, you can only hear the bottom one. Uh, the top one is like at 10% volume or something. I'm not sure if it's a hardware issue or if we're getting a software update to fix this, but right now the speakers are pretty bad. Okay, in the second place for uh, the noteworthy features is the iPhone SC. So this phone is water resistant, and I think the biggest advantage of getting this is that, of course, it is an iPhone. So it works really, really well with Apple's ecosystem. So if you have a MacBook, an iPad, this is gonna work really, really well. And if you really wanna get an Apple Watch, then of course you have to get uh, the iPhone. You cannot get any of the other options. Because they're pretty good and everything about this phone is solid if you accept the fact that it is a very outdated design. Then at number three, we have the Pixel 6a, uh, which is also water resistant, by the way, just like the iPhone. And then you also get some exclusive Pixel features that you don't get with uh, the Nothing Phone. For example, you get the Magic Eraser, which actually works pretty well most of the times. And the speakers are really, really good. You'll see a speaker test in just a second. And in the last place, we have the Samsung Galaxy M53. Uh, there's nothing much to say in terms of unique features. I think we covered everything. If anything, uh, the speakers are really bad on this. They're actually mono, so we don't have dual speakers. It's the only one that doesn't have dual speakers. So here's a quick speaker test.
Okay, so now let's talk about the scoring. So if you were to give four points for the first place, three points for the second place, two points for the third place, and one point for the last place, the scores are the following. So in the first place, we have the Nothing Phone 1 with 22 points. In the second place, we have the Pixel 6a with 15 points. Uh, then in the third place, we have the iPhone SC3 with 13 points. And in the last place, we have the Samsung Galaxy N53 with 10 points. Now, I do want to mention something pretty important here. We did have a very big issue with the Nothing Phone while we were doing the camera comparison test. So essentially what happened was we were using a guest account in addition to the main account that I was using to take the shots. And that somehow bricked the phone. Like my own passcode was not working anymore and I tried to reset it using the recovery mode, but guess what? There was no recovery mode. So then I went to find my device um, to basically erase it from there. But for some reason, it could not connect to the internet, although it had a SIM in and it was connected to Wi-Fi. So I managed to find a video on YouTube of someone else having the same issue uh, and basically showing you how to erase it. But yeah, it was not a great experience. And if you don't know what you're doing, uh, yeah, you could lose all of your data because right now there are quite a few glitches and issues, even major ones like this on the Nothing Phone, sadly. I'm pretty sure that these will eventually get fixed in time. But yeah, until then, these are the four best mid-range phones, probably without a Samsung, the three best mid-range phones uh, that you can buy in 2022. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenof Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers.